We've had this conversation and you seem to agree with me. G'day friends, my name is James of James Luke Burke Creative and welcome to another month of Art Snacks Box Freestyle where we take the supplies from this month's Art Snacks Plus box, experiment with them to within an inch of their lives, typically, and then create a masterpiece for the hashtag Art Snacks Challenge. I got something a little bit different planned for you today, but you'll see that in a second. It's been over a year and we're still getting to know each other, but my facts are getting a little bit more random. So today I wanted to share with you that I go through flip flops at an alarming rate. I don't know what it is. My husband thinks it's a bit of a problem. I might be heavy footed or perhaps I just walk funny. I don't know, but I seem to go through them a lot. I've been through many. I might have the world record of how many flip flops one human can go through, but I do love to wear them. So how many flip flops have you been through in your life? I think that'll get us off to a good start. Let's have a look at what's in the box and see what we can play with today. Here is the September 21 Art Snacks Plus box. Let's take a look inside, unwrap the green burrito and have a closer look at everything we'll be playing with today. First up in the Plus box, Claire Fontaine Paint On White Mixed Media Paper Pad, size seven by 10. There are 20 sheets of 250 GSM paper in the pad and in the Plus box we also have the Lyra Aqua Brush Duo Markers set of six and I got this pastel tone set which I'm excited to play with. We have the Derwent Line Makers set of three. I have the Sepia, that's a 010305 fine liner set. Montana Acrylic Marker in two millimeters, which is the fine size. Here's the light blue color. We have the Shinhan Art Touch Drawing Pencil and I have an HB that I'm gonna be using today, as well as the Tombow Fudenosuke Twin Tip brush pen and it is black on one side and gray on the other side both small uh, brush tips on that pen there we have the KUM magnesium long point pencil sharpener and as always the sticker and the snack let's move all of this aside to get everything out and ready to play with and we'll see what we can come up with <laughs> For Box Freestyle this month, I've actually skipped out on the experimentation. I know, well I did a bit, <laughs> I did a little bit just to test the very uh, obvious characteristics, how water soluble were those markers and, uh, and, and everything else really, how smudgeable was that pencil, just the regular stuff that we do. But I did want to point out that this Art Snacks Box Freestyle uh, video series has been going on for a year now, so there are literally so many videos you can go back to to check on that experimentation. It's not to say that I won't do it again, but today I do have a little idea that I wanted to share with you. And so instead of going through all of that experimentation process, I thought I would lean into this idea because it is super helpful for me and anything that's helpful for me, I assume will be helpful for at least one other person out on the planet. <laughs> so I wanted to share that with you today. But if you are looking for more experimentation, don't ever feel like you can't go back and search through any of those old box freestyle videos. In fact, all of the videos on the Art Snacks channels have tons of experimental and uh, fun techniques for you to be able to try. Um, I think the one thing I'll point out is that just because we do it with one brand doesn't mean you can't achieve those same results with other brands as well. If you uh, need to know what to look for to be able to apply that same experiment across brands, look for the product type. So if it's mentioned in the video that it's a water-based marker and you see all the experiments that happen, then when you're going through your own set of supplies or you're using it from a, a month in the future where we have another water-based marker, uh, go back and apply those same experiments because from brand to brand, uh, they are the same type of product and there will be slightly different characteristics, but for the most part, a lot of the same experiments will apply. So. I say that they'll be slightly different, and this is why it's always a good thing to check, right? Uh, because for one instance, black water-based markers tend to be made very differently company to company, and it's always fun to see what happens when you add water to them. Uh, sometimes they will reactivate, and then they'll reactivate again, and then they'll reactivate again, and you can just keep washing them and glazing them over and over in each other. And then other times they'll reactivate once, and then you won't be able to do anything with it after that. It'll just kind of be waterproof at that point. So those can be differences. Also the color composition in black markers can be totally different. So when you activate it with water, it can pull out this really red purple kind of effect, or it can pull out this blue green effect. So those are always fun to check. But for the most part, the same experiments will still apply. The reason I have skipped that is so that I could talk about this idea today. It's an idea that helps me out a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Probably an idea I should give a lot of credit to, and it's the idea of first thought, best thought. 
It was a little quote that came from a television show years ago that has nothing to do with art or creativity at all, but it's a thought that I kind of found funny when I first heard it, but it really does help me a lot. I get stuck a lot of times. I don't think I'm alone in this, but a lot of the times I get stuck with that blank paper and I think, huh, what idea is worth trying today? And it's all relative, right? What would be worth it for me to try might not be worth it to someone else to do. Uh, but in the end, I think we can all agree that we stare at the page and we adjudicate whether we should try this or not try this, depending on how we feel or whether we think it's going to be worth it or not. Sometimes if we think we have the skill to be able to pull it off. And a lot of the time I'm, as an art journaler, trying to pull in like what what would represent me the best? What, what's got a personal part of me in there that I could actually, you know, represent myself with? Or does this show my story the best? Or is this gonna show off my skill set the best? And it can be so many questions. And by the time you've gone through and answered all those questions, you're just thinking, wow, I, I need to go and de-stress from this blank sheet of paper. <laughs> so I like to tell myself at that point, first thought, best thought. And it's simply to get me going. And I'll explain it in a minute. So first thought, best thought is the first thought that pops into your mind and it's the best one. <laughs> Logically, it makes no sense. I know that most of us probably don't agree that uh, the first thought that pops into our head at any given time is the best one, but it is the best thing to get you started. And that's the most important thing for me as someone who likes to educate about art and creativity and who spent many, many years uh, facing my own self up against my own feelings of art and creativity. Uh, the thing that I think would have helped me the most all those years ago, uh, that has helped me the most in the past few years, has been to just get started anyway. It does not matter if the thought you start with is the best thought in the world. For now, for argument's sake, let's just say that it is. It's the best thought because it's going to get you started with something. And once you get started, there are a host of different results that we can have. But the one thing we're not going to have is you not doing anything. And that's the best result. The best result, I think I'm making sense there. Hopefully there's not too many double negatives. <laughs> Just played that back in my head. I was like, am I making any sense? The worst thing in the world, basically, in basic English is I don't want you to have time and desire and passion and skill to sit down with beautiful supplies and not do anything. I, I just think it's so, it's so sad. Like you have it all, it's all there. You have every potential and there's the facility and there's the, the opportunity. It is so sad to think that we could get in our own way, but I know that it happens. And so I always look for those moments, the things that were teachable moments for myself that I could hopefully just impart on you if they help you in some way. I'm assuming it might help just at least one person on the planet. I'll be very happy if it does. But this idea of first thought, best thought is just simply a way to get you started. And then you kind of, there are only a few ways it can go, right? Not really, I mean, it could go anyway, but, <laughs> but the best thing that could happen is that you start and you get something that you like. You know, you start with an idea, you might think, oh, this is kind of weird, like I, don't, I would never usually do this. And then you go and chase it through and then you think, wow, I actually like that, that was fun. Great, positive result. We love when we do things that we enjoy and that we're proud of. Another result is you do it and you don't like it. Great, fantastic. Here, it's also good to know what you don't like. I always think that's a positive, um, but also you actually did it. So there's something to be proud of. Even if you don't love the finished result, it's still enough to be proud of the fact that you gave it a go, that you actually managed to do something, that there is a result in front of you. It may not be uh, you know, your desired result. It may not have been the goal, but there is a result and you have that to work with in the future. So I always think that's a positive, even though the feelings might be not so positive in that moment. Um, another result is you could get halfway through it and decide that you didn't want to do it. I also think that's great too. know your limits, but also you still gave it a go. So you still get the effort. You still get the reward. <laughs> you still get the participation reward. You get the highly commended for trying. Um, and we can still feel good about ourselves for trying. So again, another positive to actually starting. Um, and then something else that is kind of magical that happens to me a lot and is why I'm recommending you do first thought, best thought, if you're in your own way a bit, is because a lot of the times my ideas 
flesh out and become better once my hands are moving. And once my head is out of that place of needing to find out all these answers before I even start, uh, once my hands are moving, my head is kind of silent for a little bit, then my imagination starts to wake up. My subconscious starts to spin around in the back of my brain and shoot out extra ideas. And you know, then sometimes I start making connections. If I'm doing my art journaling, there might be a weird, you know, personal story connection that starts to happen with the piece. For me, for Halloween, uh, the piece that I ended up doing today, I guess I'll talk about it. Um, the first thought, best thought was the fact that I have just been trolling through Instagram. Trolling? Trolling. <laughs> Is it the same thing in this day and age? I don't know. Topic for another time. This uh, this Halloween is is coming. It's upon us. It's coming in October. I knew Halloween was in October. So for the life of me, I didn't understand why this was the thought that was trying to come to mind for September's Art Snacks Plus box. But then I thought, you know what? First thought, best thought. I need to just lean into this. If this is what I want to speak about, then I should do a good job of actually leaning in. <laughs> so I just did a bunch of those random doodles in my little uh, pseudo experimentation phase at the start. And I've put them all together. I just found a composition that would include all of them and it all just kind of worked. And the funny thing was when I drawn that little pumpkin character holding that pennant banner, I thought, well, that's a great way to link that to my central character. And those little ghosties being on balloons, another great way to link them to the central character. And um, what's even better is it just kind of looked like we were setting up for a Halloween party. So even though we're in September, it looks like a piece that kind of commemorates the lead up to Halloween, uh, which, you know, was not what I planned. <laughs> Let's just put that out there. You can, uh, you know, maybe if you only saw this piece posted on Instagram, you would think, oh yeah, that person actually planned to do this. Let's set up for Halloween piece of art. And maybe this is, wow, like where did that idea come from? I wish I could think of ideas like that. It's not groundbreaking, I know, but just in case, like that is, you know, you literally saw this process happen. It was not what happened at all. This idea came from that first thought, best thought, just draw out the things that are in there, see what happens and um, almost subconsciously built its own story. Now, I can't promise that's gonna happen for you every single time, but what I can say is that I can absolutely guarantee you um, that you starting is a bonus. You, you would have no idea how many people don't actually start. And that is what I find the most upsetting because as a teacher, it kind of makes me feel like I'm not doing my job well enough. But if you're not starting, you will never know. And it's always just a what if and a maybe in your head. And I just, I can't promise that you're gonna get great results every time. And I wouldn't even say to try for that because to be honest, like that doesn't happen for me all the time and I'm doing this all the time. I can't even tell you what a success rate looks like, um, but I can tell you for one thing, it's all kind of relevant to your why, right? Why are you doing it? Are you doing art to do successful illustrations 100% of the time? I think that's going to be, uh, you know, a metric that you might end up measuring yourself up against. For me, I do it because I really, really enjoy doing it. I love to draw, I love to paint. I love how relaxing it is. I love how enjoy, uh, enjoyment, <laughs> what? <laughs> enjoyable, oh, just lost my English. I love how enjoyable it is. I love how I get to play with all the art supplies. There's something that I just really do enjoy about moving supplies around a page. I love the tooth of paper. I love the smell of the wood in a pencil. I just, all of that stuff is just, it's good for me, I don't know why, but I do really enjoy it. And so the worst thing for me is this thought that people are missing out on that because they just get too afraid to start or they're waiting for a good idea to come along. Your first thought is your best thought if you're not gonna start anything. If you've already got a thought, go for it. Um, but for those of you who might be struggling, uh, just take that advice for what you will. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna promise it'll work for everyone, but it definitely works to get me going. And that's at least something I feel proud of in those days where I don't manage to do something that's, uh, you know, groundbreaking, which is a lot of times, believe it or not, you don't, you don't always get those moments of being proud of everything that you do. Um, but a lot of the time I am just seeking to have fun. So the fun for me is just starting and getting it all on the paper. So a lot of the times I do get to enjoy myself and I do get to say I'm proud of the work that I did because I'm proud that I started and I can be proud of the fact that I got past myself to start. 
And then the more you do it, the more you just get used to it. It's not even really a thought that you have to think of anymore. You kind of get this delusional state of every thought that you have is worth drawing. <laughs> and I think that's where I'm at now. I mean, anything that pops into my mind is worth having a go at. I can put it in a journal. I can put it on a piece of paper and cut it up and put it in my photocopier machine and try it again or scan it or make it smaller, make it bigger, make it a sticker. I don't care anymore. Everything that pops into my head is worth having a go at. And that to me has been so worth it. I get to have fun with absolutely everything. And if it's just, if, if you could just get started with that today, if you are the type of person just to get in your way a little bit, hopefully this idea of first thought, best thought um, is, is a good thing for you to try. Let me know if you do, let me know if it helps. I would love to hear your feedback on that and uh, I'll see you again in an outro in a second. And there we go, all finished for September 2021. I hope you enjoyed that. If you would like to join Art Snacks, you could use the code JAMES10 at checkout for 10% off. And don't forget to share your work with us using the hashtag Art Snacks Challenge in the Mixed community and on social media. Until next time, have a great month. Bye.